We've had protests, we've had arrests, we've even had earthquakes. But today, we have silence. Fracking was suspended at this site in Lancashire in August after a magnitude 2.9 earthquake. Three months of uncertainty later, and the government has now called a halt to shale gas extraction, quote, until and unless it's proved safe. Falling short of the ban, the protesters who've been guarding the gates for three years here want. Although it's good news that there's a pause on it, it's not what we wanted here. We want to ban on fossil fuels, really, and get into the renewables. So the question then, is this a halt by a government committed to reducing a need for fossil fuels or a temporary turning of the proverbial taps? Shale gas offers huge potential in the United Kingdom, there's, there's no doubt about that. And there's also no doubt that in our determination to decarbonise, the continued use of gas will be very important for the next several decades. So there's no doubt that um, extracting more natural gas in the United Kingdom would be very attractive. But we've always been clear we can only do that if it can be done safely. And on the advice from the Oil and Gas Authority, we're no longer convinced that that's the case. So it's important that we put down that moratorium but we will be followed by the science we will follow the science so in future should the ability to be certain about seismic events and so on we will look at it again but here's a man who does want a ban this is the election that brexit delivered but expect the environment to feature heavily in september labor's conference approved a policy moving towards a path of net zero carbon emissions by 2030 it is about carbon neutral building. And out on the campaign trail today, Jeremy Corbyn said the government's pause on fracking is little more than electioneering. I think it sounds like fracking would come back on the 13th of December if uh, they were elected back into office. We're quite clear we will end fracking. We think it's unnecessary, we think it is pollutive of groundwater systems and also all the evidence from Preston New Road in Lancashire is that it's actually dangerous and has caused serious earth tremors. And that's why Quadrilla have had to halt their fracking many times, even though they kept claiming they were about to go into full production. Fracking has had a fractious history in the UK. It's believed there could be enough gas trapped beneath northern England to potentially provide up to 50 years' worth of supply. To release it, though, liquid is pumped deep underground at high pressure to fracture shale rock. Protests here have cost millions to police, and then last month, the National Audit Office report found that, after all this, there was no evidence that energy prices would eventually be lowered. The Liberal Democrats say the world is facing a climate emergency and what's needed are renewables. We shouldn't be getting more new types of fossil fuels out of the ground, setting up whole new fossil fuel industries. That's why we need to make sure that we have a bold plan to tackle the climate emergency and the government does not have that. They are not taking this seriously enough. Quadrilla Resources, who run this fracking site in Lancashire, have today made no comment. The UK onshore oil and gas groups say they are fully committed to working closely with the Oil and Gas Authority to demonstrate they can operate safely and environmentally responsibly. This might be the end of fracking for the time being. Don't expect it to be the last you hear of climate policy in this election. So joining us now is the Conservative MP Bim Afalami, who's on the All-Party Climate Change Committee. Kat Smith, who's the MP for Lancaster and Fleetwood, uh, neighbouring the Quadrilla fracking site, and the Green Party co-leader, Jonathan Bartley, is here in the studio. Bim Afalami, let me start with you. I'm, I'm very confused by what Andrea Leadsom said today, because, you know, you're halting fracking now and saying you want to move to zero carbon net, and yet she's saying in the future extracting natural gas will be very attractive. Why is natural gas very attractive when you're trying to get to net zero? Well, I think that the, the key thing that we've said today is that after our careful work, we didn't act in a knee-jerk way. We've decided that we're going to ban fracking because we don't believe it's safe. And going forward, of course, our aim is to get to net zero by 2050 and there'll need to be a, a range of yeah, different things with lots needed of fracking. which gas will be part of. No, not necessarily. That's why we have banned it. Now, you know, opposition parties, you haven't banned that, uh, have some you? of which are, are represented here, well, that's exactly what we've said. What we have said is it is not safe, and that's why we have, we have, we have banned it at this, at this present time. Well, no, the, the government says it's a moratorium. A moratorium is temporary. A ban is permanent. 
That's the difference. So you well, haven't banned it, and here well, we have the Energy and Climate Change Secretary well, saying you're looking forward to fracking lots in the future. Well, no. What, what we've done is we've done as much as you can do, which is with the technology and the information available to us at the moment, we are saying we are not doing fracking. That's as much as we can do. And going forward, our main commitment in the environment is to get to net zero by 2050. You know, we are the country that's decarbonized fastest out of all the G7 countries. So we are going to look as to how best to do that going into the future. Extracting gas may be part of that mix in the future, but the important thing for today, the important thing for now, we've looked at the evidence, we're not doing fracking. Cat Smith, the protesters on that site are welcoming this. Isn't it just churlish of Labour to criticise it? I think Bim needs to read his uh, Conservative Party press release more, more closely because he says that their policy is to ban fracking. I've read it and it's very clear to me that this is a pause and it's very clear that if evidence comes forward to the contrary, the Conservatives would plough ahead with fracking here in the UK. Now, my constituents are rightly very sceptical because, of course, our local council said no, they turned down the applications here at Preston New Road and down the road at Rosica and they said no to fracking. And it was actually a Conservative government that forced fracking on the residents here in Lancashire. So forgive us if we're a little bit sceptical up here in Lancashire. But what and saying, we say that this press release from the Conservatives is bluff and bluster. Yeah, now, what, what saying, I welcome on, the fact on, that the Conservatives just... have recognised... Sorry, I, I know there's a delay Sorry. on the line. I just, I, we've got to, got to get through quite a lot. What they are saying is that they'll only start fracking again if it's safe. What's wrong with that? Well, to be quite honest, Krishnan, I don't really care um, for that assessment of fracking because even if it was safe, I don't want to see fracking here in the UK because, quite frankly, the fossil fuels that we have under our feet in the earth here in Lancashire should stay there because if we want to actually take the climate emergency that we have declared as a parliament, if we want to take that seriously, we need to be looking for alternatives. We need to be looking to invest in renewables and switching our energy reliance away from fossil fuels and towards greener, renewable alternatives in order to meet that climate emergency. Now, we don't have very much time to make some pretty radical changes uh, to the way that this country is run. And we need to see some real change from this government to make sure okay. that our children and our children's children actually have a planet to live on. Uh, Jonathan Bartley, I mean, you think this is a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. It's a hammer blow to the industry, which is not really being picked up at the moment. The industry is, is pretty much on its knees. It's got no money. It's got no gas. This is really going to spook investors. Uh, so whatever uh, a future government does, this has really dealt a blow to the fracking industry itself. But what this does is, is, is really sort of um, kick off the, the, the start of the whole climate change debate. So, so as the parties go into this election, what, what are you promising the Greens would do? And what, do you, what are you looking for them to well, commit. We want to see this being the climate election. We want to see every issue looked at through a green lens. We know that we've got to decarbonise every sector of the economy. We know that we've got to do it really by 2030. We've got 10 years to turn everything around. So that means agriculture, that means transport, that means energy, that means industry. Every sector of the economy needs to decarbonise. And at the same time, we need a transformation that's going to tackle the inequality that's built into the but, same but system, which is ravaging the... I mean, you know, the government's committed to 2050. You're yeah. saying 2030. Some people think Labour should do the same. I mean, how, how painful would that be? Well, practically, first of all, it's making the right choices. So don't spend 80 billion on HS2. Put it into a local transport revolution. Uh, don't spend 10.5 billion a, a year in fossil fuel subsidies. Get rid of the road building budget, which will be 6.5 billion a year. Put that into providing free buses. There are many, many things that we can do to make the right choices. Secondly, we have to recognise that the climate emergency is going to cost us trillions. And the more we can invest now, the more we will save in the long run. So that means issuing green bonds, allowing local authorities to have the finance to you know, follow up those climate emergency motions that they've been passing uh, right across the country. Over half of local authorities are now passed climate emergency mo uh, motions, but they need to have the power to be able to deliver that green new deal right across the country. Do, do you think it's possible for people to get a sort of a, a handle on what radical change for the environment really means? How think, it's going to affect their own lives? Yeah. Because obviously, in, in a sort of a world of insecurity, of not really sure what the impact of Brexit is going to be, Aren't people going to say, I need to be careful what this is going to cost me? Well, I think we can show that if you super insulate homes, which is now what we're going to need to do, 
We're going to take the gas out of people's homes, which we need to do in the next 10 years, and replace it with renewable energy. That will cut fuel bills if we can cut the gas demand by super insulation and also make their uh, energy cheaper because we know that offshore wind uh, and onshore wind is now cheaper, certainly, than Hinkley. And nuclear power will be half the cost. Uh, Hinkley nuclear power. So we can you know, make free bus travel. That's going to cut people's fares. If we can make it work for people, okay. show that it's going to improve their lives, let's, then certainly we can get there. Let's see how far the other two are prepared to meet you. Bim Afalami, I mean, you've just heard a list of things there that you could do. How far are you prepared to go? Well, actually, I agree with, uh, with, with, with quite a lot of what the co-leader of the Green Party said. I think that the, the key things are we've got to think of everything in the round. When you have a target of 2050, it's because we think that is just about achievable. The Committee on Climate Change, in fact, you know, says that 2050 is going to be quite a challenging target. So we're being honest enough to say we're going to do everything we can to get to 2050, one of the very few countries in the world to actually commit to that in law. But it's going to be very challenging. And so in relation to what we need to do, what we're going to, what we're going to see from this government, if re-elected and, and in the manifesto, is our ambitious measures to further double down on our renewable energy and what we've done there to make sure that the revolution of electric cars comes to this country and increases more and more. And also, when we do all of this, remember that we need a thriving economy because to deal with the challenges of climate change, we are going to need investment in innovation, new ways of doing things so okay. that we don't rely on old fossil fuels. Cat Smith. That relies on an economy that's thriving. We can't cut off the economy. Cat Smith, are you prepared to go further and commit to 2030? Um, we'll be releasing our manifesto uh, for the election shortly. But the one thing that's really clear in this conversation is that the climate emergency also offers opportunities in terms of a green industrial revolution. There are so many jobs that can be created here in the north of England and in other communities as well. Um, in, in the green industry, in terms of um, industries which you know are very small at the minute, but industries like the solar industry, which has had the rug pulled under it from this Conservative government, you know, there are jobs to be had and there are opportunities to be had in meeting the goals that we need to meet in the climate emergency. Cat Smith, Bim Afalami and Jonathan Bartley, thank you all very much.